All right, guys, we're looking at a pedigree today of these make-believe creatures called snooter hoots. So um, this is going to test your understanding of basically all the different types of genetics problems we have worked on so far. You are going to see everything from just regular old dominance, recessive sort of traits that Mendel studied, um, to codominance. I don't think there's any multiple allelic stuff in here, but you're going to see some sex link stuff too. So it's about as complex as it can get. It's going to basically test everything that we've uh, studied so far. So let's just take a gander at the critters we have here. Uh, Sneeder Hoot is apparently some sort of a dog cow sort of looking thing. I don't know, but they've got some very specific, specific characteristics. Um, first of all, you'll notice that some of them have necks and some of them have no necks. Some of them have tails and some of them have no tails. Some of them have our white coat color, some are black coat color, and some are striped or spotted coat color. Um, so there's three different possibilities there in terms of coat color. Uh, what are some other different characteristics? I think that's those are the main ones you're going to look at. I don't think there's any other other ones, but we'll kind of see as we go along here. So uh, when we look at the tail, okay, tail is a dominant trait in snooter hoots. Now, how in the world do we know that? Well, if we, if we look at um, tails, what we could do is we could actually kind of do a little cross here, right? So if tail is dominant, then these two individuals here, and you're gonna to have to do this throughout the activity, must have a dominant T. So let's agree that there's two ways these could look, right? They could be big T, big T, or they could be big T, little T. Both of those would give us, a, would give them tails if tails is dominant, right? But let's take a look at their children here, okay? Looking at their children, like some of their children have, oops, Harry's not one of their children, right? Some of their children have tails, okay? One of their child children, Charles here, doesn't have a tail. So the only way for that to happen would be for both of these parents to look like big T, little t. It's the only way, because if this one was big T, big T, and that one was big T, little t, well, then there's no way that Charlie here could get little t, little t, which we know must be what he has because uh, we, we were just told that tails is a dominant characteristic, okay? Now, looking here uh, at, uh, at the uh, tail situation, okay, remember the difference between a dominant and a recessive trait. Recessive traits, by definition, can sometimes skip an entire generation right like we could have skipped this whole generation it might have just worked out that none of them ended up with no tails that they all had tails and then all of a sudden tails could or no tails could reappear in a later generation right so um seeing the fact that every generation in every generation there are tails it's not skipping that helps us to understand that right so not skipping this generation here with tails if, if these guys if tails wasn't wasn't dominant then uh it could be very likely that we wouldn't see tails anywhere in here okay but that didn't happen let's look at old charlie here do you know charles's genotype and phenotype remember phenotype is the way it looks so looking at charles's phenotype for tail how does it look Right? It's genotype, Charles's genotype for tail is going to have to be, and I would fill this paper out as you go, like print this thing out, have it with you. Uh, otherwise, this will get really difficult because you're going to want to, like I'm doing here, add in their genotypes for the characteristics you're looking at because you're going to get asked about them further down in the paper. So if we look at old Charlie here, we know because of what I just said, the only way to be tailless would be to have little t, little t, right? That's the only way old Charlie can be. 
looking at, for instance, Gertrude here, how would you figure out her genotype for tail? Well, her phenotype is tail, right? She's got a tail, but her genotype for tail, well, is it big T, little t? Is it little t, little t? Is it big T, big t? Well, you already know it can't possibly be little t, little t because she wouldn't have a tail. Now, what her having a tail means it's either big T, big T, or big T, little t. How in the world do you figure that out? Well, basically you do a test cross and luckily she's mated with a perfect individual to do a test cross with, one that we know. We absolutely know little t, little t. Okay, so homozygous recessive is the ideal individual to test cross with because you know their, their genotype just by looking at their phenotype. So every no tailless, every tailless one is gonna look like that. So we do this cross here and we ask ourselves, what do the babies look like? So you might just work two Punnett squares there. Work one with Gertrude like this, big T, big T. Work one with Gertrude with big T, little t and see which one could possibly give you these individuals down here. Right? Remember, oops, remember Russell's not part of their family. Russell made it in. So these are their babies here. So one of these scenarios will allow you to have Irma and Christ, Kristen here who don't have tails. There's only one way that can happen because remember, you get 50% of your genetic material, half of it comes from daddy and half comes from mommy. So you're gonna get one of those alleles from here and one of those alleles from here. What's the only way that these two can come out without tails? I think that should be obvious, right? Um, let's look at Pearl here. Where is Pearl? Pearl, 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 there's Pearl. So like I said, filling this out as you go is gonna help you out and make it a whole lot easier. Um, looking at Pearl here, um, second here. keep track of where I'm at here. Okay, so looking at Pearl, her phenotype for tail is that she's got a tail, right? But what's her genotype for tail? Well, how are you gonna sort that out? There's a couple of directions you can look at here, right? We can look at her parents and see how this is possible, or we can look at her offspring because thankfully she mated with Tom Tom over here. And old Tom Tom, we know Tom Tom's genotype, don't we? He doesn't have a tail, so he's got to be little t, little t. Oh, once again, perfect test cross. You always want to test cross with a homozygous recessive individual because we know their, their genotype from their phenotype. So we test cross here, look at their babies, and I bet you can figure out what Pearl's got to have. Okay, I bet you can kind of figure out what Pearl's got to have. Now, looking, just glancing at this, you're probably also going to have to look up here. This is only gonna give you part of the story here. You're gonna to have to look up here because both of these guys here had tails um, and all of their babies had tails. So you're gonna to have to kind of make an assumption there as to what the most likely scenario is for all of these babies to have tails and for all of their babies to have tails, right? Do a Punnett square, work out the percentages, what, what, percent, what would give you the, most, the greatest likelihood of all these babies having tails and all of their babies having tails? What would Pearl have to be? Okay, more than likely, right? There's, there's two possibilities there, but more than likely she is one over the other, more, more definitely. So. Um, when we talk about having a tail, right, having a tail is simple dominance, okay? The tail is dominant. It's big T. I assigned it that allele, okay? No tail is recessive. That's simple Mendelian genetics right there, okay? Um, right, and there's two phenotypes for tail, right? Two ways it can look. Now let's talk about old Larry and Chrissy here. Here's, here's Chrissy down here. So these are individuals that we might wanna mate with some of these individuals up here, okay? Um, they're not part of the actual family here, okay? This is a, the pedigree basically shows you generations, remember? Generation one, generation two, 
generation three, generation four. These guys are all outside of the generations. Okay. So let's try and cross here Larry with Chrissy. Now there's Chrissy. Where the heck did Larry go? Larry, Larry, Larry. Come on, Larry. There's Larry, okay. So I've got Larry here and Chrissy here. Let's say that I wanna cross them and I wanna know about their tail situation. Well, I've already figured out like dominance and recessiveness for tails. So Chrissy's got no tail. So you know Chrissy's genotype, don't you? Chrissy has to be little t, little t, doesn't she? And Larry's got a tail, but does he have big T, big T? Or does he have big T, little t? Both ways you could have a tail, right? We can sort it out. So what we need to do is look at Larry's parents to figure out what this scenario is. And remember, we just talked about this. We just said, okay, Charles, one of his parents has little t, little t. Larry had to inherit. There's the only thing he could get from Charlie here was a little t. So Larry's got to have a little t, but Larry's got a tail. Well, that means that Larry has got to have a big T here. That's the only way Larry can possibly look. So we just sorted out what Larry was right there, didn't we? Larry is big T, little T. Only way he can be. Now all we need to do is run our cross. So I'll just do that underneath Chrissy here. So don't be afraid to draw out these Punnett squares on your paper. It will help you out. I'm going to just stick Chrissy up here, little T, little T, and we'll stick Larry over here, big T, little T. Okay, do that cross and you will figure out your odds of their offspring having a tail, right? Remember, tail is dominant, it's the big T. Let's look at Darla. Okay, where's Darla? Here's Darla. We can ask what were Darla's chances of having a tail? Once again, to figure out her probability that she got it, she did get a tail, but what was the probability? You're going to have to cross Darla's parents for a tail. And oh look, we've already got their genotypes. We already figured that out. That's why it's gonna be helpful for you to write in all the genotypes as you go. You might just go through and see how many you can fill out just for practice. So cross these two and figure out the probabilities. How about Charles's chances of having a tail? Well, where's Charlie? Well, Charlie's part of their family as well, okay? So Charlie's chances are gonna be the same as whatever any of the children's chances are. It doesn't matter, right? So if whether we're talking Darla or Charlie or Ernest or Rona, it doesn't matter. They're gonna have the same probabilities because we're talking about their parents here, okay? Let's look at coat color. Okay, look at coat color. So how many different variations are there of coat color? There's black, there's white, and there's striped. So you should be thinking right away in your mind, right? Um, what's the difference between dominance here? Remember, in regular dominance, uh, like what Men Mendel studied, there's only two variations. Well, that's not the case, right? There's not just black and white. We've got something in between. Now ask yourself, is it something in between that's like gray or is it spotted, right? So we're dealing with the spotted sort of situation here. Remember back to all of our lectures, you can look online if you need to, what type of heredity that is when you have a scenario where one color and the other color both show up. They don't blend, they both show. Um, so, we can also look at something else that Mendel had studied here, and that's that uh, snooter hoots of all colors, whether they're black or white or spotted, okay, they, they can have tails or not have tails. In other words, just because you're a black colored uh, snooter hoot doesn't mean that you have to have a tail. I bet we could find one on here. Oh, look, Jerry, who's colored black but doesn't have a tail. Okay. Those things, that's showing us that the alleles assort independently. Okay, that's what Mendel found out was that um, just because you receive a big T for tail doesn't mean that you're going to receive whatever allele or alleles for coat color. 
Okay, those things independently assort. That's the whole idea that Mendel had figured out. Uh, so when we look at coat color, okay, coat color most specifically, most definitely, does not fit with Mendel's idea of understanding of dominance, right? Because one of the one of these colors of coat is not dominant over the other, is it? Something else is going on here to give us things like this. In regular old dominance, it's either you got the thing or you don't got the thing, okay? Okay, let's look at the necks here in the, the snooter hoots. Okay, so um, let's look at how many of these necks tend to be uh, short in males versus females. So uh, I guess we have to kind of assume what some of these names are here. Uh, so we've got, these guys have, have necks. Let's just go through, and I would just go through and, and maybe circle or, heck, we'll just grab a highlighter here. We're just gonna highlight the, the ones here that don't have necks. Ernie there is missing a neck, isn't he? Short-necked Ernie. Harry here is missing a neck, isn't he? Let me make sure I don't miss any here. Nancy, missing a neck. Oscar, missing a neck. Bilbo. And we've got Kent over here. Clark Kent. I think I got all of them there. So looking at that scenario, who has them more often than not? Who, who's got this short neck situation? We've got Kent here. We've got Billy. We've got Oscar, Harry, Ernest. And Nancy's the only girl we're assuming that's got the no neck scenario. So what does that tell you when there are more males who show a particular characteristic than there are females? In other words, it's less likely that a female is going to get this type of characteristic. There's a specific type of a situation we talked about where that's the case, okay? Where more males will show with it than females will, okay? So let's look here at old Bertha. Where's Bertha? Bertha. Ah, oh, there's Bertha. So Bertha's way the heck up here. So Bertha, check it out. Bertha doesn't have a short neck. Neither did Albert. But two of their, or one of their kids had a short neck. Ernest got a short neck. So what must be the scenario? What must be the situation here with Bertha's genotype for neck, okay, if Ernest was able to end up with a no neck? Okay, let's look at Kent's, Kent here. Here's Kent. And we want to know Kent's tail genotype. Well, we know his phenotype. He's got a tail. So we've got two possibilities, right? Kent could be big T, big T, or Kent could be big T, little T. I'll just write those both down there. Both possibilities for Kent. Now, who would we want to cross Kent with to figure that out? Could, will we want to cross him with uh, Chrissy, Betty, or Gertrude? Well, let's look here. We've got Chrissy. We've got Betty, 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 Betty. Betty's over here. And Gertrude, where's Gertie? Okay, so basically you're asking yourself, which of these three would you already know their genotype without a doubt, okay, without even doing anything but looking at their tail or no tail situation? Okay, which of those would you already know? And which one would give you the most information by looking at the babies? Because one of these three, if you cross them with Kent, is going to give you basically the answer as to whether Kent is big T, big T, or Kent is big T, little T. Okay, take a look at that. It's a test cross. 
Okay. Next couple questions are a little bit more difficult here. If you're breeding snooter hoots and you've got an order for tailless multicolored snooter hoots, what, who would you want to cross? We're gonna definitely have to do some Punnett squares here. Okay, so if we want tailless, let's start with one piece at a time. Okay, we want tailless. So to get tailless, there's only one way to do that, right? Little t, little t. So no matter what, we're gonna wanna cross two individuals who don't have tails, right? So let's immediately cross out the ones that don't fit that bill. So we've got some choices here. I'm gonna go ahead and erase some of my circle situation here so we can look at this new one. It's always good to write in a pencil, right? Because then you go, oh, take her easy there. Can you erase? Okay, so we've got choices. We could cross Jerry and Irma. Where did Jerry go? Where did Irma go? There's Jerry and Irma. Okay, so I'm gonna draw a line between Jerry and Irma. We could cross these two. That's a choice we're given. We could cross Charles and Chrissy. Here's Chrissy. And Charlie. There's Charlie. I'm gonna draw a line between Charlie and Chrissy. This is just so I can keep track of the ones I'm looking at here, okay? Yolanda and Jerry. Yolanda, Jerry, 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 Jerry. So we could cross these two, okay? And as I start to narrow this down, I'm gonna erase the ones that don't fit. Betty and Tom. Betty. Tom, 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 there's Tom. Tom's way the heck over there. Okay. So let's take the first piece as we look at this, okay? Do we have any scenario where, where we're going to definitely get no tails every time because we want to have um, tailless. So if we cross Betty and Tom, Betty's got a tail, but Tom doesn't. So that's going to be, that could be helpful, but it's not going to be as helpful, is it? Let's look here. We've got a scenario here where Jerry doesn't have a tail, but Yolanda does. So that's also could be helpful. We might have to figure out if Yolanda's big T, big T, or big T, little T, right? If Yolanda's big T, big T, then every baby is going to have a tail. So that's not going to work. So we need to, we need to see if there's a better situation here before we sort that out. Let's cross Jerry and Irma. Ooh, well now there's an interesting situation because Jerry doesn't have a tail, Irma doesn't have a tail. That means, remember, Jerry's got to be little T, little T. That means that Irma's got to be little t, little t. So that's a pod, real strong probability there. Let's look at the other one though, Charles and Chrissy. Both Charles and Chrissy are little t, little t. So now we've narrowed it down, we've narrowed the field considerably, haven't we? So let's, let's get rid of these ones that we know aren't going to give us tailless every single time. So we'll just get rid of those off the paper. The beauty of an eraser. Okay, so you see how we've narrowed this down. We now have two scenarios left whereby every baby, no matter what, is going to be tailless because all the parents are tailless. They're all little t, little t. The next step is to figure out how we could get... Um, how we could get multicolored snooter hoots. That's what I'm looking for. So we want them to look like this. We want them to be multicolored, both black and white, okay? Don't just make a guess on this. You need to actually sort out the Punnett squares. So we need to do two Punnett squares here. We need to do one for Charles and Chrissy and one for Irma and Jerry, okay? So let me set up Charles and Chrissy for you, and then you, you can figure out the other one as well. Okay, so I'm gonna set up Charles and Chrissy. So here's a Punnett square here. Remember, this is more complex genetics here. This is not just simple dominance. There's three different varieties. So you should right away be thinking about codominance here. Okay, so if Charles is like this and Chrissy is like this, okay, we need a way to represent coat color and show that it is 
that it is co-dominant here. So um, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna represent coat color with a big C and a superscript for the color. So I'm gonna have Charles here as big C, big B as the superscript, and I'll represent him also as other allele, the white one is big C, big W. Now I could have just used the big B and the big W. Um, it's written like that sometimes. Sometimes you do co-dominance like this. There's lots of ways to show this on a Punnett square. Now look at Chrissy. She's got the same scenario, doesn't she? So Chrissy's gonna be big C, big B, big C, big W. So there's different ways to show co-dominance. So as you start to fill this out, remember, you're gonna go big C, B, big C, B. So I took this, this allele, boom, took this allele, boom. Okay, now I'll let you finish filling the rest of it out, but what's this baby gonna be right here? This baby is going to be all black, right? The only way you could be spotted like this or striped would be to have big C, big B, big C, big W. It's the only way you're gonna end up that way. So work both of these crosses. You can figure this out and sort out which one's gonna be the best scenario. I've narrowed it down to two choices for you here, okay? But work the two Punnett squares. Okay, don't forget to do the one for, uh, we were doing Charles and Chrissy there. Don't forget to do Jerry and Irma and see what you get. One of those is gonna give you 100% of the babies looking a certain way. Okay. Let's look at Albert and Bertha. Where's Albert? Here's Albert and Bertha. We've actually already sorted out what their tails are gonna look like. That was one of the very first things that we did, figured out their genotypes, okay? Now we're looking for Jack and Kristen. Jack, Jack, Jack. There's Jack and there's Kristen, okay? They're, they're children of Gertie and Charlie. Okay, so Jack and Kristen, um, if, if these two are twins, are they, are they, are we talking about identical twins or fraternal twins? You might have to look those two words up. Look up what identical twins are and look up what fraternal twins are, okay? One of those types is going to share exactly the same genetic material. The others um, just were born from two different eggs and have different genetic material. So one good hint here, take a look at this here on Jack and on Kristen, look at this here. Okay, that's a real good hint as to which of the scenarios that is. Okay, um, and then remember, when we do generations, these guys aren't part of the generations down here. These are just some other individuals that we happen to want to cross to see what would happen with some of these other generations up here, okay? All right, hopefully that helps you out. I think it should make it pretty easy if you watch the video while you do that, but print that paper out. Uh, it'll make the whole situation a whole lot simpler for you.